So, Hi Commissioner, uh, we would like you to speak about how South Africa plans to keep the focus on Global South and inclusive growth in its presidency. Uh, you have uh, 10 minutes uh, to, to say, I'm, I'm sure you'll have much more to say, but please confine to 10 minutes so that we can have some questions later on. Over to you, Excellency. Thank you, thank you very much. And, uh, it's not very fair to put me after such an outstanding speaker. <laughs> but thank you very much, Professor Srikath Kondapal, distinguished ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen. It is once again a pleasure to be honored with an invitation to be part of this dialogue, to reflect on the legacy, oh, to reflect on the legacy of India's G20 presidency. I'm particularly pleased that the organizers have requested me to provide some reflections on South Africa's perspective on the Global South and prospects of India-South Africa cooperation in the G20 and other multilateral forums. Owing to limited time granted, I should like to confine my reflections to the African legacy of India's G20 presidency under the theme One Earth, One Family, One Future. The G20 family was expanded with the inclusion as permanent members of the G20, with the inclusion of uh, Africa as permanent members of the G20. This adds a further 1.3 billion people and a GDP of three, of three trillion US dollars to the G20. That's the realization by India that the world would not have become one family if 1.3 billion people had continued to be left out of the G20 can better be captured by a philosophy we call Ubuntu in Africa. This means you are because I am. We are fully convinced that the participation of the AU will strengthen global economic governance and allow African countries to own and influence decisions on key issues. This will further add weight to the calls by developing countries in the G20 for the reform of global financial institutions and institutions of global governance. Well, remember that before, you, before Delhi, uh, before the invitation by Prime Minister Modi to the AU, Africa was an outsider. And uh, every time the G20 met, we issue a statement, we call upon, we call upon, we call upon. Now, we won't be calling upon, we'll be inside the G20. In addition to this watershed Afrocentric character of 2023, India's presidency enabled greatest number of African participants around the G20 table with the participation of Egypt, Mauritius, Nigeria, and Comoros. This is in addition to other invited participants of the, South, of, of the South, which included Bangladesh. Indeed, the inclusion of these many and diverse voices of the South left its mark on the quality of the outcome of the summit. Most importantly, it has demonstrated India's commitment to the realization of the historical demands made by the Global South at the Bandung Conference in 1955, which, amongst other things, called, to the cre called for the creation of the new world order which is inclusive in its character and form. The Daily Leaders Summit took place against the backlog, backdrop, backdrop of uh, increased polarization stemming from the conflict in Ukraine, increased inequality, increased poverty, and the challenge of debt sustainability as the world is still recovering from the economic hardship brought about by COVID-19. Given the context in which the summit took place, we appreciate the significant contribution of the countries of the South, that is uh, Brazil, South Africa, and Indonesia, in assisting India in, in tabling a text on the most contentious paragraphs of the outcome document that broke the deadlock. This is demonstrative of the soft power of the South in bridging the divides that exist between our friends in the G7 on the one hand, and Russia and China on the other. It is through this model of South-South cooperation that the summit was therefore able to ensure that 
geopolitical challenges and divisions <coughs> brought about by the conflict in Ukraine did not derail or de detract the important focus which the Indian presidency placed on development. As countries from the South and Africa in particular, we are in, we are pleased with the commitment by G20 leaders to reinvigorate multilateralism and reforming the international financial institutions. We must give present representation and voice of the developing world and be responsive to the needs of the poorest and most vulnerable, as stated in the declaration. Worrying though is that the speed at which the debt challenges <coughs> of the least developed and middle income countries is being addressed is not commensurate with the challenges confronting governments in these countries. As I conclude, I wish to highlight some of the possible ideas that could inform the presidency of South Africa. We will build on the presidencies of the three developing countries before us, Indonesia, India and Brazil, which are our strategic partners and the like-minded on the importance of sustainable development. If India, Brazil, and South Africa were to coordinate their presidencies through the G20 Troika, this could have a significant positive impact on the G20 and the wider international system. Processes are underway to identify South Africa's priorities for its G20 presidency. We'll select partners to work with to craft the structure of the G20 presidency. The government of South Africa will approach local and international organizations such as Pathfinders, Organization of Economic Development and Cooperation, IMF, World Bank and United Nations agencies and the South Center and work with them during the G20 presidency. In 2025, over and above South Africa's own G20 presidency priorities, the country needs to revisit previous G20 commitments with a direct bearing to the development agency agenda of the Global South, particularly of Africa. In that vein, South Africa will continue seeking to ensure that the G20 implement, implements its previous commitments towards Africa, including G20 support for industrialization in Africa and least developed countries. South Africa's presidents of the G20 will have a strong focus on Africa. In 2025, the African Union will be a member of the G20 for two years, for two years following its admission at the new daily summit of 2023. The South African presidency will further focus on the developmental agenda and implementation of the SDGs. South Africa will further the attention, will further the attention to better respond to the current global economic climate and energy crisis the debt crisis facing African and other developing countries and illicit financial flows. Finally, the year 2023 will be remembered for the leadership that was demonstrated by both BRICS in adding an additional six countries and the G20 with its inclusion of Africa. These historic developments captured the imagination of many a pundit. This year will thus be remembered for the demonstrable and seismic changes introduced through the leadership of, of South, which captured the imagination of many and reverberates across the globe. The impressive outcome and development focus of the Indian G20 presidency must therefore be cons consolidated and serve as an impetus for the successive G20 presidencies of the Brazilian and South African and of, of Brazil and South Africa in 2024 and 2025, respectively. In this regard, President Ramaphosa looks forward to working closely with President Lula of Brazil as he prepares to take over the presidency of the G20 in 2024 and to build on the foundation laid by India. We give credit to India for ensuring a people-centric approach to its presidency, which we will emulate so that G20 addresses the needs and so that the G20 addresses the needs and aspirations of the marginalized majority of the world and truly ensures no one 
is left behind. Thank you very much.